they're in the repository, then I guess I should be heading that way as well. Alright then. Are we still in, we're in the second floor, so that's the third floor. Where are the stairs? There you are. Alright. One theory I have for transportation of the dead bodies to cut off the innards of Hifumi's organs and export his just dead body regard so that's it's easier to transport, but at the same time, that'd just be disgusting. And it'll leave a lot of obvious evidence with blood stains all over the area. So But yeah, that's I was wondering that as well. Alright, whatever. Okay! Hifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to go rigid. But only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched next to Taka without hesitation, began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth. She was so calm. Let's see how comfortable she was actually... Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. Okay. Alright, what do you have to say, Kyoko? Let's see. Makoto, I found something. Hey. You remember the wrist watch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did. <sighs> Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? No, I just don't pay attention to obviously hidden wear. Anyway, so you said he had a watch? So then. Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? Do you think that's the time that he was murdered? Most likely. It was most likely broke when he had to encounter with his assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past 6 o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after 6? PM or AM? It's still daytime, so I'm, I'm assuming AM, so that's when he was killed? That's right. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. How can you know? What the fuck? Hey you! How long are you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced through the air and stare pointingly at his wrist watch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know! Bedtime's for- okay. What the fuck? In other words... So if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning, it must have happened at 6 this morning. Okay then. Wristwatch had been added to the truth bullet section to the However. handbook. And that's not all. Take a look at Taka's left hand. It appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's something white in here. Makoto. Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because... Rigor Motors has set already set in. Boys are better suited for this kind of m manual labor, right? Does it matter? Okay, I guess. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I finally been able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. It's a little scrap of paper. It doesn't seem like a clue, or does it? Is that right? I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to Ifumi's body. So then. Let's check on Ifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us clues of his own. Alright, Ky Kyotaka's scrap of paper. Alright. Alright, that's what we're trying to figure out right now. Furthermore, it seems like Fumi's died from a blow over the head. He was most likely killed during the Justice Number 3, which we found in the nurse's office, but... Found his body in the nurse's glasses were covered in blood. But now they're spotless. Does that mean someone wiped off his glasses clean? But who would do that and why? I guess we have to talk to her or something, again? So, did you find anything? I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A water paper? That's right. Fumi had it hidden in on him. Hidden. Indeed. He stuffed it on his pants, so I can only assume he's in now on purpose, you see. His pants? Wait, so you... Why is that? It was just his pants, not like his socks or something. That's not what we're gonna go through, but okay. I don't know what that means. Hey. It seems like Miss Kyoko here is very innocent-minded. <laughs> Makoto. Um, anyways, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Morikuma. Okay, so this is definitely the uh, note that he was talking about. I found a hole where we can use it to escape. Morikuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. 
Let's meet up in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So... That sounds very familiar. That's it! It's the same thing Hiro said! Then, he was telling us the truth. Then again, at the same time, Hiro could have planted that note onto, uh... Onto, uh, what's his face? Hifumi, so that could have been another possibility. However... Although, it's not exactly the same, is it? Uh, um... So that someone slipped a weird note under my door. And that's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Well, Kuma can't find out, so don't... R rec room at 1 a.m. The rec room at 1 a.m. Okay, so that's actually pretty interesting. Maybe it does have some sort of alibi? Maybe not? Who the fuck knows? Time is different. Hiro told us that his note was said to meet at 1 a.m. But the note they wrote to Ifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Ifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. So... Part of it was been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. There's some meaning to the other part be Is there some meaning to the other part being ripped? Um, could you explain a little more? Think yeah. carefully. Why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I have no idea. So then... What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would something more- something important like that have become a mere scrap of paper? That's what I need you to answer. Alright. Hey. And while you're at it, we- I'll show to, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So the handbooks had nothing to do with how the murder- Okay, I was never gonna assume that in the first place, but alright. Not that that was any reason to think they were connected to the killing in the first place. Don't act like we're idiots, game. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time, right? Is that right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. All I said was that they weren't used to carry out the murders. There may come to a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. If Kyoko thinks it's important, we better keep in mind. The handbook has been added to the truth bullet, okay. Oh, is that really it? Oh, fuck me. Alright. Oh boy, guys. Here we are to the next trial. Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks. Like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot! Okay. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! So, the class trial is about to begin. It looks like we have all the evidence we can gather, at least. It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where the investigation comes to an end. You have to figure out the rest of yourself and come to a proper conclusion. This is gonna be, a uh, scary, without a doubt. And I'm trying to remember all the mechanics, too. I think we can also take in witnesses' testimony and try and contradict that with another as well. Oh my god! I really need to play this game more often, huh? Alright, yeah, you're right. Shall we go? Well, we better get going. Okay, then. In the meantime, let's save our progress just in case, and we'll take a break for the next episode of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Tragic. Trigger Happy Havoc! Sorry. Oh god, this is some scary music. Alright, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned.